Hey everyone, uh, I'm back with Dimitri. So if you didn't see the last video, it was really honestly amazing. Uh, it actually, Dimitri, I didn't tell you this. I, I sent out a link to it in my newsletter and I realized after the fact, I don't know what I was thinking. I should have done an animated GIF on the video showing because it's, it's so spectacular, some of your 3D work and, and everything. Um, anyway, he did some stuff with ActiveX. And at the end of it, we were talking about, hey, would, would GDI, if we had drawn it, would GDI would have been faster? And, and I'm like, I, you know, I don't know, conceivably. But um, apparently, um, you've done some of this already. Yeah, I've, I've done some things in the past with GDI. But uh, now I'm all the way going with uh, Auto Hotkey 2. So I found it an interesting uh, exercise also to try if that could be translated. And I uh, was thinking that it would be way faster. That would, was my estimation. And uh, uh -huh. uh, I'll, I can, I'll first, I, I also have changed the, the look of the program a little bit. I will first uh, show you the ActiveX uh, example. I moved the controls to a separate GUI. And uh, I find that it looks uh, way more professional. Uh, yeah. And I also uh, changed a little bit. I didn't put the uh, pixels random anymore because I wanted to compare the two scripts perfectly. Sure. Right, right, yeah. So that I just sense. used uh, some kind of a, a, a rule to, to set the, the initial pixels so that both scripts will have the same starting point because else it's, it's quite... Uh, useless to compare them because actually the, uh, the, how the pixels are, how many pixels are on the screen alive matters in the, in the rendering. Because, uh, in this example, the active X is actually just, uh, changing the, uh, the visualization of the small, uh, squares, uh, that are changing. You see here some, uh, oscillators, I think. That yes. Um, yeah. And also, only there he's actually changing the HTML code, and yeah, that is actually causing a delay. I also add some extra values. That is actually the refresh rate. How many times it is uh, refreshing the, the the pixels on the screen, and this is actually the average uh, refresh rate because this is changing way too much. So you can see that this is uh, going up a little bit because there are less uh, pixels that are changing. But this can it, just to clarify, just because again, my background is in statistics, right? So yeah. well, I'm just curious when you're when you say the average, is it like a locally you know weighted average where you're you're saying like the last hundred or something instead of it's not the whole thing? Is that right? No, it uses the whole thing. It's okay. maybe well, not you... perfect, but it yeah. gives a, a roughly an estimation. <sighs> I didn't yeah, it's make just a... it. After two hours, that would be very, very consistent. You know what I mean? Because it, 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 you're taking that whole range. Anyway, so you, that's why you might yeah. want to limit how far back it's going. Yeah, you can see it climbing a little bit up. And you're, you're true, it would be maybe better if I just put uh, used the last hundred. But uh, yeah, I was uh, lazy. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, this no gives you yeah. an estimation, so right. I was happy enough with this. Uh, and this is actually the, the grid dimensions because I found that also quite important to, to see a little bit how many uh, pixels I'm using, how many coordinates. Okay, so I can just keep this open. And then I will uh, also run the other one. And you, you see, of course, this is going way faster. And also the, the rate is uh, quite higher. This is a, yeah, a GDIP like version. Yes. Nice. Yeah. So I think this proves that uh, GDIP is actually uh, yeah, superior in speed, at least for this way of setting it up, because Maybe right. you could also change something different here in the HTML that you don't go searching for uh, images, but that you use a definition of a black uh, square. It's possible that that's even faster than to 
displaying images. Yeah. And maybe you do or don't know anything about this, but would would your like the type of video you card have any effect on you know on the two on on them differently is the more important you know would it would it treat them equally what what's the resources being used is it just a cpu mainly or mm. who knows i actually have no id yeah <laughs> you should test yeah. it that's the best way to to check it out <laughs> but yeah because uh, if, if you have a fast computer this would go way faster uh, right this place. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Um, yeah, but I, I think this proves that uh, yeah, if you want to have a little bit speeds, uh, maybe JDIP is a, a good way to start. Well, it remind me because I didn't you know when, when even though it was short your your program with the, um, using ActiveX it wasn't a long program by any means right. But in our previous video we didn't like dive into the code. Um, I wasn't studying it. In in the ActiveX example, are you reading the hard drive when you're doing stuff? Um, yeah, it's reading the the image. Oh no, I don't understand. What do you mean? Well, is it, it uh, like with GDI? You're you know you're not reading a file from the hard drive, correct? Yes. So and when I, ActiveX is referring to an image that is on the hard drive, so okay. maybe that slows it down. Yeah, that's yeah. the reason why I told you that maybe it's it's more interesting to use a different uh, right right different way just to uh, not refer to image but just yeah use something different. Yeah. But uh, I actually there are ways to. Um, to draw uh, polygon shapes and, and squares on the HTML pages. But uh, in this version of HTML rendering, uh, it didn't work. Okay. Yeah. So probably there are better ways to do it, but yeah. And I'm, I'm curious. I'm just using images. Yeah. And, and because the ActiveX is using your hard drive, um, I'm just curious to know this if you don't care telling us. Do you have an SSD drive um, on your computer? Yeah, it is an SSD drive. Oh, good. Okay. So that at least, how, otherwise, we probably see really big differences, right? Um, or an, even an M2 drive, which is all memory, right? Which is going to be faster. But anyway, yeah, yeah that's, that's very cool. You know, but, uh, it, it is, it's sort of related, but years ago, I was doing stuff with uh, Maestria. And he was teaching me XML and structure and stuff. And for me, XML was always a file. It wasn't like a structure that could be in memory or, you know, in a file. But it, it took me quite a while to really grasp that, like, it doesn't have to be a file. You know, it's it's just how the data is stored, structured. Sorry. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Uh, apart from uh, adding the controls to a separate uh, GUI, what's... I like it because it looks uh, more professional. I also add uh, some options to uh, to draw some interesting shapes that I talked about in a previous video, but I couldn't really demonstrate them. Mm -hmm. But now I can, can show it a little bit. So I made a, a right click oh, menu. Cool. And nice. uh, this is actually the, the nicest I, I find. Uh, because it actually Indeed. generates a glider on their own. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, I'm actually stopping it because um, if you put extra uh, objects, it's better to just uh, stop it. Uh, else sometimes it, uh, you have uh, spaceships. Uh, I think, yeah, just a, a block. This is stationary. This is also, that's just Oscillator. links. Oh, okay. Uh, do I have the toads? There's, yeah, you see this one moves in, in one direction. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. And with this, uh, some. Uh, Really crazy people start making a lot of 
complicated systems that uh, that can do some strange things. <laughs> I think a lot of mathematicians uh, are uh, loving this. <laughs> But I found it a good way to to check. Uh, is it a good way to visualize things and uh, to test uh, GDIP out uh, and also ActiveX? Yeah, is in your example before with the H ActiveX uh, example, um, you you had it colors, you know, getting applied and changing stuff. But it, with GDI, like it's suddenly whatever it's so much easier right to do those kind of things i, I gotta imagine um uh yeah also uh with activex i was actually always using images right and with gdip right. you can actually uh there are functions to to draw a, a filled rectangle or a fill, yep. filled circle so uh, then you are a, way more flexible to to change the colors of course, I think with HTML, you could maybe also do it, but maybe, yeah. I think if you would render it into a, a Chrome window, you could even do also add uh, shapes and things like that. Uh, I think there you have uh, more possibilities. Uh, well, and yeah, which I know you'll you'll agree with, like like you said, if you, with ActiveX and if you understand HTML and CSS, there's a lot more you can do, right? We're not saying it's not possible. It's how easy is it and how much do you have to learn in order to be able to do that, right? But um, yeah, the whole, you're always going to be, re uh, well, at least to start maybe reading from a file or, or with the approach you did before, you're reading from a file and that inherently is going to be slower. Yeah, of course, I always prefer to not use extra files because yeah, uh, if you have a script that can run on its own, you have the less problems with uh, if other people want to test it out and things like that. And it's actually, uh, yeah, it's it, it's nicer. Also, I like uh, actually uh, I I found a a joke on the, on the forum. It was people asking how could you? Um, they wanted to know if you could make a script that also um, displays an image that is inside uh, the script itself. And actually uh, one guy said, yeah, I have something, try run this, running this. And then uh, the reply was, um, yeah, I, I'm getting an error, an error message. Yeah. But what the person didn't realize that the, the error message was the image. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's that is funny. Um, I was thinking also just getting back to the whole different approaches, and I, I think you'd agree with this as well. The given the fact that at least in our examples here, the HTML is reading from your hard drive. Um, in this example, and GDI isn't. Um, the how good how fast your computer is um it would people's experience with your program would be very could be very different with the htm active x version it'll be it'll be more consistent with the gdi version because you don't have hey what kind of hard drive do you have or the speed of your hard drive right it's it's memory and and it's probably going to be more consistent yeah actually if you want to have it more consistent maybe it's even better to to put in a slip in, inside the loop uh -huh. and it would always gotcha. be the same of course you but in this example yeah i actually I, I can set up a little bit speed i can slow it a little bit down so it's easier to to follow the the changing is, is that what you're doing with your speed is just that it changes the increment of a sleep yes okay I, I don't do stuff like this, so to me, it's it's kind of voodoo of like I, I don't know, you know, I'd have to think through what what you're trying to do and how I go about doing it. Uh, but cool. Oh, it's just uh, reading the the value of this control, and uh, mm -hmm. actually, I, if if the speed is zero, I uh, skip the function because okay. I'm not sure if you say sleep zero that it will actually 
not use a default right right the two, two millisecond i think or something like that it's a yeah i i'm not sure for security reasons i i just put in an f statement yeah. uh, if that value is zero then just give it uh yeah oh i was sorry i was thinking of uh when you change the set batch set batch file to run or is that what it is set batch no um what is it set batch lines to minus one is that what it is there's something it's in my default script and it'll it'll have it run at the fastest it possibly can uh, uh no actually i think uh, if you uh, version two uh, do doesn't use it anymore oh okay okay so i think it's always just uh, the fastest as as possible that'd be interesting because i i know you know, most people said you really wanted to sleep a little bit. Otherwise, if you're you get in some sort of loop, you could have some problems with your, you know, burning out. So, but anyway, maybe maybe you know things are that was years ago, right? Maybe there's safeguards built in now. We we can quickly uh, check it out. So, which is a very important point is to remind people if you if you download these, um, it's Auto Hockey version two, right? You have to get that and. Not only that, but correct me if I'm wrong, it's like the latest version of version two, the, the beta version, you know, the yeah, yeah. 2.3. Did you see, by the way, because um, Tab Nation, and his, his name, I can't remember his name on the forum, but he was receiving an error when he was trying to launch it. And um, he's he's he has a YouTube channel as well. And so he pinged me and we were chatting. And, uh, and I, I confirmed with him that he had the latest version of auto the the latest version of version two in auto hotkey um and we also tried launching it both in 64-bit and 32-bit and it nothing helped he kept getting the same error and i'm like i yeah i don't know but he he wrote a question on the forum um i don't know if you saw that uh, oh it's no it's just the default behavior now but you can change it yeah okay um i'm assuming I'm you can sure. change it it's just saying i'm not sure it, it, if you can I don't see here an explanation that's... Well, the fact it says it's now the default behavior, I think that does mean it's implying that, like, you st it's still a command or, or, or a function, I guess, because nothing's a command anymore, right? Um, yeah, but strangely, what I use a lot is uh, if you go here to the explanation of version 1 and you right. change it, then you will normally go to the the replaced function or yeah but in this case he, he doesn't find anything so then i went to the, the the changes between the versions and there he just there isn't that much explanation you, so. why don't you um go into your code and try to set it to something different and see if it gives you an error um yeah, we can try. That's... It's not uh, recognized. Yeah, interesting. Maybe set it like this. Nope. So I think the... Okay, I'm with you, yeah. They removed it. Uh, but I think you can still set some uh, priority settings. Uh... Have you ever actually used that? Is the priority setting? Yeah. No. Nope. I, this is years ago when I truly didn't know what I was doing, you know, but I, I saw this and I'm like, hey, I can change the priority of my things. I'm going to have it run at a higher priority. And for, I didn't try to benchmark anything, but I couldn't actually tell a difference. I'm like, you know what? It, it's, I was doing stuff where it, it, it wasn't CPU intensive. So, you know, it probably just didn't have any effect. It probably worked, but it just, you know, it, it didn't matter. Yeah, 
in most of the cases, I just say, try it out and, and try to test if there was any difference. And, and that way you, you don't need to ask yourself if, uh, if it affects something, you just test it. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Well, that, that's amazing that you, like, I was going to say, do you sleep? Like, how did you get this done? Like so fast? That's, that's impressive that you already converted it over to the GDI. Cause that, is, that, I don't know. Maybe it's cause you're already working with images for me, that GDI library. Whew, man, it's complicated. Actually, I just try to find one good example. And if you have one example, yeah, it's, it's just actually what you, you have a, a startup. I can show you a little bit code of it. So, so you'll get a little insights into how I code, right? Dimitri? Um, when I, when anytime when I'm trying to work on something new, I like, I, when I jump to the help or I look at the thing, I look for the example. I don't read the documentation. I go find the example <laughs> and I use it uh, kind of like, like you said, right? I just take the example and use it. And then if I can't make that work right, then I'll go read the help. Even though auto hockey's help is really good. Usually um, I just, find it much easier for me and faster to just take the example and play with it. Yeah, that's true. For example, if you see here the, the scripts, uh, I just put uh, this self-made script uh, uh, inside the same folders of uh, some examples that I, that I found uh, on, okay. uh, on yeah. GitHub. <laughs> yeah. But actually, it's, it's just uh, first you need to know how to set it up and that is actually uh, this version this uh, lines i uh, also you all always uh, for gdip you yeah. uh, need to start with this line and i think it's, it's just uh, loading the gdip the dll library so that the gdip is uh, running faster but i hmm. think you could even remove this and then it should normally work that's Try it. I, I think GDI is graphical device interface. Does that sound right? Uh, okay. Then I should also. It is. Yeah. I, it's, I... And it's, it's like built into Windows, right? It's actually a Windows library that's been around yeah. forever. Yeah. Actually, the. Uh, the library is just uh, calling DLL calls. Uh, yeah. Okay, now it's not doing anything, so <laughs> my assumption is wrong. <laughs> now I, I remember. <clears throat> yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So first, you you use this line. That's to load up the library and apparently uh -huh. it's necessary. So let's always do that. And then, um, I'm not sure what he's doing here, but I think he's creating a, a bitmap where you can, can draw on. And this is the amount of pixels that you can use. Um, and I also noticed if I put uh, less values here and I make uh, the image wider, then it just freezes. Yeah. Oh. And yeah, what this is actually doing to be, oh. I have Sorry. no idea, but it works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's, that is exactly how I am with this library. It's like, I, I don't know. Um, when I did some stuff, this is where like, I will ask Maestrieth or even, or Jackie knows it pretty well too, um, to say, Hey, like, I want to take this image, but not save, do whatever. And they're like, well, there's an H bit map and then like a, a P bit map, some other one. And it was just all way over my head. Like, I, I forget which one. Oh, oh no, that's what it was. Jackie. And I think we have a web uh, podcast on it where he, I, I told him for my screen clipping tool, I used his, his someone's example, and they pointed out the OCR Windows has 10 has built in OCR. And I yeah. said, you know, I'm going to add that to my Windows snipping tool. But the way I, I had it work was my Windows snipping tool would draw the square, it would save it as a file, and then it would process it. And so I said, Jackie, is there a way for me to do this without saving it as a file? And so if I remember correctly, we did a podcast where he converted it 
to where it didn't save it as a file. And that's where he was talking about the stuff. And I'm like, you know, ow. <laughs> like, I don't understand how you know this stuff, but okay. Yeah. Uh, this is also get a pointer. Yeah, I, I think getting a pointer, we, we know what that means. That right. actually just yeah. having something to to have a handle on to, to do something. Yeah. Well, it, correct me if I'm wrong. It's a reference to where it's stored in memory. Kind of that's is yeah, that what it's. I, I, yeah, I think your explanation is way better. <laughs> yeah, no, but it's, in my head, it, it's still how you said it. But I think it's really that's what it's doing. But um, in my head, it's just a handle. Well, oh, that's how I connect to it, right? Like that's that's my way into it. Yeah. yeah. And here you have uh, this is actually if you start drawing things and you change this value, I, I've put it to zero. That is very sharp, just pixels. And if you, for example, put it to to four, then it will also add pixels around the shapes and make it a little bit more fluent. Okay. So you, you could play a little around with it. I think it goes from zero to, to four and uh, yeah, see how it works for you. But uh, in this example, uh, zero was the most appropriate one because I just want to have hard pixels. Uh, yeah. yeah, right, right. And then uh, you actually create brushes. Uh, that's actually picking a color, and that is a color that you use afterwards to to draw rectangles. Uh -huh. And here, actually, my my code stops uh, for the GDIP stuff, and then I think yeah, what updates. I think. Uh, so was... help me understand this real quickly. Like you have a, I guess it's called a canvas, an, an area, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, in that area, you are telling GDI on these pixels, because there's a set amount of pixels in that area, correct? And then yes. you can tell them whether to color it. And I don't know if you have to tell it to be white or if you just have to say, just don't color it and defaults to a certain, a certain value. Is that, do you know? Um, I think, I'm not sure if I tell it somewhere to be white. Yeah, I think uh, he brushed that. No, I actually. I use it here. And to clear. And here I also use it. So yeah. I think I I thought I, I changed it, but apparently I reverted it back. Um or maybe it's I know here. Loop I max. This XI, no, that's not the one. I think here it's just updating all the, the pixels separately. Yeah. Well, okay. Now here, here's another one. That um, can you bring? Can you run it or to have something on screen just so I can have something to talk ah, to? No, 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 no. Excuse no? me. Here I I uh, I see one line where I use it, and that's actually for uh, ah. I was kind of lazy, so <laughs> if it just is updating and actually refreshing, then it's actually uh, just filling first all the uh, all the white pixels in one go. And then afterwards, it just adds some uh, some black pixels. Yeah, because now, I wanted to optimize it. But if you start uh, clicking on the screen, and then you can yeah. you can draw on it, and you can yeah. change it also from uh, uh, black to white and back. Then I'm just uh, changing the uh, 
the the pixels separately yeah because that's a little bit easier sure but actually the the one that is consuming speed and and the refresh rate is actually just uh it's a little bit smarter than that uh, and then okay with the active x on on the old version where i forget if we slowed it down or well it's when we had a lot of things we could we could see it kind of process across the the goo the, the the canvas right we yeah. can see the pixels updating what i do here's what i don't understand on gdi and with what you just said i, I have a little insights into it but does does gdi basically go through and say hey okay here's the canvas here are the colors we're going to do and then apply all like all at the same time or is it doing it pixel by pixel one at a time this is actually here, this function, update layer window. Here you actually, uh, with, with GDI, you actually create a, a hidden a GUI uh -huh. that you are using to, to draw the pixels on. And in this example, it's a GUI 2. And then you give the, the handle of, GUI, of the GUI. Yeah. You also give this, I, I guess this is the the data of of the bitmap that you created and then you give the x i the width and the height and then you will draw it but you you see here i first uh, go to a loop it's actually it's a double loop so it goes to all the coordinates of uh -huh. the of the grid and then uh, Actually, first I is is this function that it just fills everything white because here okay. he, it takes a pixel size uh, um, with the, all the the maximum x value and the pixel size with the maximum i value, and then I go to every uh, x and i coordinates and I fill it when the the state is defined as uh, as one. Okay. And you're filling it with the black then? That's right? Yes. Because the, the other one was the white, just making sure. Okay, cool. I Because it, I think that in general, there are more black pixels than white ones with, uh, with uh, the game of life. So I, I took that into account. You mean the other way, don't you? If there's more white than black. Uh, yes, there's more white than black. I figured as much, but so and, and the backup because I think you've said all this, but basically, line two, well, let's see, two eleven, like this is working on a hidden layer or whatever you want to call it, a different GUI. Uh, sorry, a different, did you said a different window GUI. I can't remember. Um, yeah, uh, a hidden GUI. Yes, a hidden GUI. Then you draw everything you want, and then basically you're swap, you're swapping them or pointing to the new one to say, hey, use this one instead. Right. And that's why we, so it's real. I'm really glad we talked through this because I really would have thought it was doing all of them at once. We see it all at once, but it's not because it drew them all at once. It drew them individually and then applied it. So we see it all at once. Yeah. You updated it at once. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool. Anyway, very interesting. Yeah. I'm, and thanks for talking me through. Like I said, I've, I, it's it's my most popular post is that not post but script is the Windows snipping tool which uses the GDI library but I'm like I've never you know gone into it people ask me to change stuff and I'm like yeah I'm I'm not touching it <laughs> just because I don't know it I'm like yeah uh -uh. yeah anyway you all, always just make a backup and then you can fuck it up and <laughs> yeah that's that's the uh, the pro uh, uh, programming. Uh, um mantra right yeah have a backup and i i did i was working earlier today on some uh uh looking at my api calls to my newsletter and trying to do stuff and i had to back up like 20 steps because all of a sudden i looked up and something wasn't working and i'm like oh it's that last change and then it still didn't work and then i kept going back and back and i finally anyway so yeah keep the running back and everything i do is under dropbox also so every, i could always revert you know to earlier but yeah um but if you want to work on gdi i just would recommend to to you find a very simple example and just 
try to yeah. change a little code in there and and then you 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 see how how it affects the the script uh, yeah I think that's one of the best programming tips people can hear, right? It's with anything, with GDI or anything. When you're trying to do something new, don't pick an unwieldy, really large thing and try to start working on it. Pick something small or just take, you know, a small part of a big thing and start working on that little thing, right? And work on just that until you get it, until it's working. And then, you know, either what I would do, instead of just add to it, I would go to the next thing separate and work on that separate and then later keep pulling them all back into your bigger thing over time, but making yeah, them separate yeah. is it really helps you focus, right? And make sure what you're working on, you know, and understanding what it's doing. Yeah, just a small script where you just are uh, trying to test one thing out and if that works, you put it inside a function and you, you're defining that function as working like I want it and yeah. Sorry, I, my dogs are loud, so I'm trying to mute and unmute. Um, the other thing that I do is, uh, which I was, and I haven't quite finished yet, <clears throat> but um, have you do, you, do you do much like automating other programs, trying to, with AutoHotKey, or do you just write new stuff? No, actually, on my job, I, uh, I use a lot of uh, COM. Uh, actually, is it still COM? Yeah, I think yeah. COM. But our guys is still uh, yep. using com, um, and also there, I have one uh, um, database program that is really hard to handle, and there I really need to use uh, send input keys to nav navigate to it. Um, yep. It's just that hard of the program, and that is the best way to. To, to make it do what, what I want. And then uh, I also have one uh, drawing program that actually draws uh, 3D images, 3D models. And for that program, I actually um, use a separate program to communicate with it. And it's uh, using HTTP request to communicate with it. What, what kind also of for that one, HTTP requests. The HTTP? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sorry. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So API actually, calls basically, but yeah. Also for that one, I, I don't know. I found the script on the internet. It's working. I'm not sure how it works, but if you find one example that works, then you can replicate it. And, uh, if you can access one command, then you can access them all. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, I was asking because so every Friday I have that live support, you know, and someone was, they they were working with a, a CRM, you know, a database like tool, and the controls were dynamically updating every time he would redraw the screen, the, 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 the class NN would actually be different. And so it was very problematic. And so we actually, we worked through it using the ACC library, but I, today, yesterday and today I was playing with it to, um, to build a way where we can use coordinates to say, go to these coordinates and get the name, the class and then of whatever's at these coordinates. But anyway, getting long story short back in here was I was working, getting it to work and I got it to where most of the stuff worked. And then what I call is I, fun I functionalized it. So after I get my code working, then I say, okay, what are the things actually we need to be able to change, you know, and I create a function out of it. If I was a better programmer, I'd probably make a class out of it, but um, it, it is how I found, I, rarely do I start from scratch and say, let's build a function, right? Usually it's, I've already got the program and I get it working. And then I say, okay, now what, what are the things I need to be able to change? Right. And, and, and or I'll wrap other things other people have done and just said, you know what, they have 8 million options. I just want three, you know, and I'll, I'll build my own function wrapping theirs and be like, now it's easy. Two, two. Yeah. Anyway, this is and, really, really cool stuff, man. Yeah, and the interesting thing about a, a function is that you can use it everywhere in your code. And if you then once say, yeah, it's not working like I want it, then you just change one or two yeah. lines and right. updates everywhere. Yeah. Right. 
well, that's one of the important parts when people, you know, they, they don't use their library. And I'm like, you know, I, I, my library is chock full of stuff that I use. Uh, but it's, it's what's great is that like it, if, if later I make a tweak, it applies, which it's one of the things I didn't like about Python was, man, it was so confusing because I'd have all these different installs of Python with different libraries and I get really confused on where things were. And I don't think there's anything quote unquote special about auto hotkey other than they really kind of promote using your library, right? And make it simple to keep one version of auto hotkey installed in your library and have library, local library folders, you know, in and under your my documents, but I never use that. Um, but yeah, it's being able to use that library, it's a lifesaver um, and, and use uh, functions that either you include them or don't even include them and put them in the right spot. And it's just, it's awesome. Although that went away in version two, didn't it? You have to use an include in version two, if I remember right. Um, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, Isaiah, as your Raptor X, we were talking about it one day. He, ironically, like I said, he is, he's like Mace to me, like light years ahead of me, right? And he didn't even know that it was a thing where you could put the function in your library and not use the include. And when I showed him that, he first was like, but he's like, this is terrible. Like, this is a terrible idea because you'll forget that you had an, in, you know, like basically you go to share it and you forget that you had something in your function library and you'll forget like you don't share it. I'm like, well, I just use publish in it from studio when it pulls it in for me. <clears throat> yeah. And what uh, with version two, uh, if you use classes, then you need to put the includes in the, the top of the script. Oh, really? Yes. Does it, tell me this, does it error out if it, um, if you don't put the include, but you reference a function? I'm sorry, a class? Um, uh, I think it errors out, yes. Because in, you know, version one, it doesn't, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> it doesn't error and it just doesn't tell you what's wrong. And it's, it's, to me, it's like, oh man, that's, that's bad. Actually, I have uh, one one extra tip that I recently discovered about yeah. the Internet Explorer. Maybe uh, I'm not sure if it's uh, known to a lot of people. But uh, yeah, I, for example, here I have uh, some files. And if you want to, to search inside the files, you can actually uh, just type contents. Sure. And then uh, let's search. Cool. Uh, uh, Question? Include, yeah, or whatever, right? No. Well, and, and this to me is one of my pet peeves of Explorer isn't that you can't, it, that search tool is incredibly powerful, like how you can search for things. What sucks about it is there's no drop, there's no guide, like easy, easy, you know, the, like XP had a great guide. I want, I want pictures. I want um, videos. I want small files. I want files edited before this date or after. It was, it was so simple and easy to use. This one's more powerful, but it's, you got to memorize it. You know, um, it's, it's to me just, yeah. Well, I see actually in the, in the search the, in the ribbon there, they've updated that because now there were options there in the ribbon to say the file size and whatnot. Um, th that wasn't there before, at least to my knowledge. Yeah. Okay. Apparently I'm doing something wrong, but, uh, it worked before. It's we're always breaks wrong. when we're live. <laughs> I personally maybe you, use, I use maybe Grek Web. This, yeah. Maybe you need to search uh, the full word or something like that. Uh -huh. <coughs> you use a Grep Web? Grep Web? Yeah, it's a free program. It, it it's very robust. You can you can do regex searches as well. You can exclude folders or include folders and do almost anything. And, and it does search replace, which is across files. Um Auto Hockey Studio has it built in, but it, I find Grepwin, because I use it a lot, I'm very familiar with it, and so I, I really like it. I actually used it because I uh, I had a, a complicated uh, script of uh, Auto Hockey, and somebody, actually you, Joe, <laughs> you asked me to change something. So then uh, I was not sure why where I could could find some that information that you wanted to change it. So that was my first go. Uh, oh. First, you need to search where the data is located, and and then right. uh, you can start modifying it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. 
Well, awesome, man. Thanks for uh, showing it. And that, that's a really, it's its very cool to prove out that at least in, in the way we you had done them, um, GDI definitely was a lot faster, right? It doesn't mean it's necessarily the end all be all always going to be faster. But um, in this simple example, to, to see it, how much better it was rendering in the speed stuff, that's awesome. It was, it was, correct me if I'm wrong, it was like twice the, the frames per second, roughly? Um, I think it depends because okay. it depends how you, you actually cannot compare them totally because in one program you're changing uh, the visibility of the images in the ActiveX. You just change if the image is visible or not. Uh, and I only changed the one that are changing and the other one, I actually refreshed the, the whole thing. I uh -huh. made everything first white and then I, uh, I, I start painting the, the black dots. So yeah. it's depending on what you want to visualize, but I, we, we can actually do one, one extra test. Um, let's, uh, improve the grid. Let's make it 100 by 100 and see what the result is then. I, I would as, I would assume, well, let's see, no, the grid itself. <laughs> so it's going to have more, it's going to have more drawing or they're going to be bigger. Uh, yeah, then you have more pixels. Okay. So four times the pixels. Right. Uh, this is the GDIP. And you can see that it's quite a, a lot slower. Yeah. Right. But it's still nice alive. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It looks good. Yeah. Fluent. Fluid. I guess that better. And then I'm starting up the other one. It's running. Did I hear your CPU fan kick on? <laughs> <laughs> ah, there is it. Wow. Um. <laughs> it's a little bit slower. <laughs> yeah. I, well, at first I thought it said 10, but then I'm like, oh, there's a decimal there. Yeah, okay. Go. <laughs> yeah. And I indeed, maybe, maybe Joe, if we could make it so we can update uh, the whole uh, HTML page in one go, then it's maybe possible that this would be faster. If we could figure that out. Yeah, I was just thinking, um, yeah, I agree. Uh, I just, uh, anyway, yeah. But it, it all depends how you let the program run and yeah. But uh, GDIP is the way to go if you want to visualize things and you want to have some speed. But uh, as you all know, uh, AutoHotKey isn't the strongest right. program to, to do this, but... Right, right. But at the same time, your... yeah, neither of us are quote-unquote programmers, right? And you're doing some amazing stuff. Um, and try try having done this like in C-sharp, right? Like it would have, I'm going to guess, it would take you much longer to work this out in C-sharp compared to AutoHotKey. Yeah, that's true. And it also depends what your aim is. But if, yeah. for example, you want to make a complicated game with a lot of flashy graphics, yeah, then. <laughs> right. Well, or you're trying to do something that's going to be run on, you know, 100,000 computers, right? Suddenly, these, you know, this, this might matter. But on something that we're just doing on our computers, who, who cares? You want to optimize this development time, not how optimal the performance is, unless you're trying to learn, right? How to, how to be a more optimal programmer, which is 
nothing wrong with yeah. that. Actually, I mainly use GDIP to uh, to draw a, a a pie menu. A pie menu. Uh, uh, a mouse menu uh, in the shape of a pie. Okay, that sounds weird. Um, a, a radio menu. Oh, uh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Oh, okay. You're right. It's a pie menu. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a menu shaped in a pie. Yeah, I, I'm yes. like, why would anyway? Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh. and for, for for that, this is for that pie menu. It's it's perfect. It's it's false enough. Uh, it's more right. than more than enough. Uh, yeah. Well, it's awesome, man. Thanks again for uh, for coming back and showing us the update in at least kind of. At a high level, answering that question of can it, well, I guess our question was, could it be faster? It definitely is, you know, it can be faster with GDI. The question is, was your original one the most optimal example anyway? You know, probably not, but um, yeah, as a quick example, that's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. Thanks, thanks Dimitri. Bye. Bye.